Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1459. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick number 1024, and if I click this, it'll jump us right to YouTube. Here it is. We had a table that was tracking different dogs and different categories for expenses. And we summarized in various ways up here. And down in the comment section, Krista asked, and here I have it right here, how do we avoid doing one sum ifs for food and a second sum ifs for accessories? So up here we did two different ones. And she thought that we could simply take sum ifs and combine food and accessories. Well, we sort of can do that, but we're also going to have to use not just some ifs, but some product. Now, in this case, if you only have two conditions, and really, this is going to be an or logical test, because I need to search through this column and say, are you food or accessories? Food or accessories, all of these would come out true in the or logical test. This would come out false. So really, doing two sum ifs and adding them is probably going to be just about the same as doing sum ifs and sum product. This formula works best when you have not two, but maybe three or four conditions in an or logical test. But we're going to answer this question right here. Yes, we can still use sum ifs. Now, the sum range we're trying to add. And this is an Excel table. The Excel table is named F amount table, and then the column in square brackets is called amount. Now I type a comma, criteria range. Well, guess what? We have two criteria ranges. We have to look through the dog column and the category column. It doesn't matter in which order I put these in, so I'm going to start with the dog column. There's the table name. There's the field name in square brackets, comma. Now, criteria one, that's going to be this relative cell reference. So as I copy down, we'll get a different dog. Comma for criteria range two, that's the category column. There's the table name. There's the field name in square brackets. Now, if we look at the screen tip, comma, criteria two, well, guess what? I need food or accessories, so I'm simply going to highlight both. And immediately, I'm going to hit the F4 key, F4 to lock it. So as we copy down, it will always get food or accessory for each particular dog. Now I close parentheses. This will not work. If I hit Enter, first off, it's going to give me 0. But let's just look up here for FIDO. Notice FIDO, there's the food amount and the accessories amount. So really, we need the total of both of those. So now I'm going to come down here, F2. Let's use the F9 key to evaluate this formula. If I hit F9, no way. $17.80, $79.50, those are the two correct amounts for FIDO. Now I'm going to click Control-Z. The way that SUMIFS knew to give us two answers instead of just one is in the criteria two, we gave it that range. That means we gave it two criteria. As soon as we give it two criteria, that tells some ifs to deliver two answers. So now all we need to do is add them. Now I could use the sum function, but the sum function, because this is an array operation, and an array operation means the formula element is spitting out multiple answers. And because this is an array operation, I'd have to use the special keystroke control shift enter for this array formula. But I'm going to be smarter than that. Backspace. I'm going to type the letter P, sum product. That function can add our array operation without the special keystroke control shift enter. So tab. Now normally, sum product takes a number of different arrays, multiplies them, and then adds them. But all we're going to do is put our array operation, that means the result from sum ifs, into array 1. Sum product won't do the product part. It'll just do the adding. Now, I always remember that this 
function can handle array operations without control shift enter because, hey, look, the argument is named array. Now I'm going to close parentheses and control enter. That just puts the formula in the cell and keeps the cell selected. Sure enough, that's the correct answer. If that's the total for Fido, food, and accessories. Now I can double click and send it down. I want to go to the last cell, hit F2. I'm verifying that all of the cell references are working, and they are. And because we use the Excel table feature, when we add new records to the bottom, our formulas will update. So I'm going to come and click in the last cell and hit the Tab key to add a new record, Fluffy tab. I'm going to put the same date by using control apostrophe. That copies whatever is in the cell above, tab. That just gives me 724-2013. Invoice 10593. Food tab 142 cents. Tab control Apostrophe to give me fluffy again, tab, control apostrophe, tab, control apostrophe, tab. And now I'm going to type the letter A. And because we have values above us, autocomplete will suggest and we want it. So I'm going to hit tab. And this was $22. Now I'm not going to hit tab because I don't want to add another record. But when I hit Enter, this better come out to be $164.99. So Enter. And sure enough, our formula for adding food or accessories is working. Fluffy's total, $164.99. Thanks to Krista for that question. If you like this video, click that thumbs up and comment and sub for more videos. And we'll see you next video.